Today, I first have a question. How many of you, thank you so much. Thank you, you're excited. How many of you have a hard time letting people or someone else control your life? Control where you eat. Control what you do. Let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. If you have a hard time. Uh, most of us, right? Like, we don't like it. I don't like it. Let me tell you something. Uh, three years ago, I was about to turn 26 years old. That was three years ago. Thank you for being excited about my... I am 29. I'm not 30 yet. Easy, cowboy. But this is what's happening. By the way, I can barely see you guys. It's kind of hard in here to see. I don't know if my glasses are dirty or what. But let me tell you this. Three years ago, uh, Natalie, my wife, she was my wife. She wasn't even my girlfriend at the moment. She was just the girl that I was talking to for like two weeks. She said, she had a great idea. She said, you know what? It's your 26th birthday. I'm going to throw you a surprise birthday party. And I'm like, well, thank you for ruining the surprise already. <laughs> Let me tell you, I love surprises when they're actually a surprise, when I don't know anything about them. So she said, don't worry, I will do everything that I need to do. I will contact your friends. And I'm like, girl, you don't know any of my friends. And I started to worry because I like to control the fun. I don't know her yet. I'm like, I don't know if you're actually fun. So she did the whole thing. And this is what something that she did. Um, she picked me up at my mom's house. Yes, I was 26 years old and still living at my mom's house. It was amazing. Do that if you can. She picked me up at my mom's and she blindfolded me. Now, girl, you threw me a party. I think that's enough. She put this rag over my head, my eyes. I could not see anything. Again, I like to control things, especially the fun. I want to make sure I have a good time. I don't care about you. I care about me having a good time. So she did that to me, and I did it, right, because I was kind of trying to impress her because I wanted to date her. And the whole time, literally the moment that I got in the car and I was blindfolded and she turned right, I was literally in my head in my map. Okay, we are in Wilshire right now. Oh, stoplight. Oh, another stoplight. Oh, we turn left. We're on the highway. We're on the highway. Where are we going? I was trying to control something I had no control over. Have you ever been there before? That you try to control something that you have no control over it. Now, let me tell you, because I told her, hey, babe, I'm going to tell this story on Wednesday night. And this is what she said. Make sure you tell them that you tried to guess the whole way. So here we go. I tried to guess the whole way. And I was like, are we going to Cheesecake Factory? Are we going here? Are we going there? I didn't, I didn't enjoy the ride because I was so worried about controlling the situation that I had no control over. Now, am I being too loud? Good. I'm glad. So when, uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the sovereignty of God. And what that basically means is that God has the supreme power, supreme authority, and control over everything, over all the creation. Now, I told you I have a problem with control. I really do. Like I, sh like I said in that birthday, I didn't enjoy the ride because I was too worried about where are we going? Who's going to be there? Trying to control all the things that I had no control over. Now, what are those areas in your life that you're trying to control, that you're trying to manipulate, that you have no control over? And maybe tonight you're having a difficult time to see God as a good God because of what happened on the past. Because maybe you trusted God with something and he didn't come through the way that you wanted him to come through. Now, let me tell you, when my parents were going through a divorce, well, I was praying and I was believing. And God answered that prayer differently than I wanted to. And from that moment on, I had a hard time trusting him. And I started to control my life and doing the things that I wanted to do because I wanted to be on the driver's seat. 
I was like leading my life and just telling God, hey, shh, follow me, buddy. Come with me. How many times do we do that in our lives? That we say that we, that we trust God, that we, that we are under his authority, but in reality we are just driving the car. And he's just right there. Not even in the passenger seat. He's like in the back seat. Have you been there before? That's what I want to talk about tonight. It's about all those things that worry you, that add stress and anxiety to your life, that you continue to worry about and you have no control over. Tonight we're going to discover what to do when we are facing those situations. I know that you might be having a hard time, you know, trusting God, letting Him lead. But there are things that you have no control over. Let me tell you something else that I used to worry about when I was a kid. I worry about my family members dying. And literally, I couldn't go to bed. What if my grandmother passed away? What am I going to do? What if my mom died? What am I going to do? Like, if I could control that, only God can control those things. So are we going to say that we trust him? Or are we actually going to do it? Because one thing is knowing that he has all authority, that he's in control. And another thing, it's actually acting like he is in control. We're going to be looking in the book of Matthew, chapter 6. The book of Matthew, in chapter 5, Jesus starts the Sermon on the Mountain. He's teaching his disciples. He's teaching the crowds about a lot of things. When it comes to Matthew chapter 6, especially specifically the verses that we're going to be reading about, he's talking to the disciples and the people around him about money and possessions. Because a lot of the times the things that bring worry and anxiety into our life are things like that. Like maybe you're a senior here and you don't know what to do for college yet. And you are worried about your future. Maybe you play sports here and you're worried because you have an injury. And you don't know if you're going to be able to recover and be the same player. Maybe you're here and you lost something you've been praying about. And it's bringing all this worry and all this anxiety that you have no control over. This is what Jesus said. Jesus talked to his disciples, and he's telling them, don't worry about those things. He says, look at the birds. By the way, my hand is right here. Look at the birds. They don't plant the seed. They don't, they don't cultivate the seed, seed, but they eat from the fruit. God cares so much about the birds that he gives them fruit to be able to eat. And we believe that about animals, but we have a hard time believing and trusting God that he actually will provide for us. He says, look at the lilies on the field. How beautiful they are. They don't do anything. They just grow. God takes care of it. Let me tell you, I struggle with letting God have control of my life. I like controlling 99% of the things that I do. So I understand that you feel that way. This is what verse 33 says. This is what Jesus told the disciples. It says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live and live and he will give you everything you need. In the verse above, above, verse 32, it says that the Lord knows everything that you need. Everything that you need in your life, he knows it. And here he's telling you what to do. He's saying, seek first his kingdom. Leave what? Leave what? And he will give you everything that you need. Okay, my problem is... That I think I know what I need. I think 
I know better than God. Verse 34. So don't worry about. Tomorrow. Don't worry about. Tomorrow. For tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's troubles is enough for today. Jesus is telling his disciples, don't worry about the things you have no control over. He says, God knows what you need. And as long as you do what you're supposed to do to seek first his kingdom, he will provide for you. He will give you everything that you need. This is the thing. God knows better of the things that you need than the things that you think that you need the most. He knows better. I know a lot of the times we're like, we, we, worry, we worry about, well, I don't know what my purpose in life is. And you try to do your own things. If God created you, and I say it every single week, God created you on purpose, for a purpose, with a purpose. If you're worrying about your future and what you're supposed to do with your life, I think it's time for you to turn to God instead of every other thing that you're turning to. Because if he created you on purpose, he will reveal the purpose that he created you for. God gave you a body, and he will supply for you to sustain it. God will supply everything that you need. The problem is that we want to be in control of our lives. We want to be in control of what we do because we think that we know better than God. So I want you to answer that question to yourself. You think you know better than God for your life? Because a lot of the times we say that, no, God knows best. I'll follow him. But we just act and do whatever the heck we want to. Seek first the kingdom of God. Now, this is my sermon in a sentence. Very simple, and it's kind of cheesy, okay? So give, cut me some slack. I'm a little disappointed of how cheesy this is, but this is so true. It says this, sermon in a sentence, write it down. When your parents ask you what you learned today, tell them this. Don't worry about tomorrow. God is already there. Don't worry about tomorrow because God is already there. What are those things that you're worrying about, about your future, about your family, about what to do. What we need to do is to obey what the word of God says, to seek first his kingdom. The future, God is already there. He knows. He knows. He knows better than you. He knows better than me. If I have control over the things that I want to control, God won't be in control. And I get it's so easy to say that God is in control of my life. It's a whole different thing to actually let him be in control. So my question to you tonight is, what are the things that are bringing you worry and anxiety? And answer, am I seeking the wrong things in my life? Because what you're seeking in your life will bring those things to you. Is what I'm seeking and going after bringing me peace or bringing me more worry? What are the things that I'm going after? Am I going after the things that God wants me to go after? He knows what you need. And as soon as, as, as long as you Seek first his kingdom. He will bring everything you need. He's in control of it. What is it? What is bringing you worry and anxiety in your life? Have you taken it to God in prayer? Does he know about the things that are bringing you worry and inside, and he knows all things, but have you taken those things to God in prayer? Or have you just turned to your friends, turned to people, complain about your situations? This is what I want you to do. 
I want you to write down. This could be tonight. I encourage you to do it tonight before bed. What are the things that are bringing you worried, anxiety, that are keeping you down? What are those things? I want you to write them down. A piece of paper. You can do it on a note on your phone before you go to bed. And I want to take those to God in prayer. And have an honest conversation with your creator. And tell them, God, the future is stressing me out. My family, it worries me. Don't know what's going to happen with my parents. What is it? What are those things that are bringing you worry? That keep you up at night? I want you to write those things down. And go to God first. Seek Him first. He will take care of you. We serve a God that it's, in, it's all powerful. And it's in control of everything. It's he in control of your life. Or are you in control in your, of your life? Would you stand up with me? Imagine if you, tonight, before you go to bed, you actually write down what are those things that are bringing you worry in your life. That you're having a hard time letting go of that control. I wonder how would you sleep tonight if instead of worrying about them, you actually write them down and have an honest conversation with God. I believe you will be able to sleep tonight. I believe that God will come through because you're putting your trust in Him. Would you close your eyes, bow your heads? Maybe you're here tonight and you say, Pastor Christian, I've been in control of my life. I've been doing everything I want to do. I've not been living like God wants me to live. I haven't been seeking his kingdom first. I've been seeking everything that I want. But tonight, I want to make a decision to turn to God. And I want you to pray for me. If that person is you, nobody looking around, I want you to raise your hand wherever you are. I see your hand. I see your hand. I see your hands. I see your hands. I see your hands. Now, Maybe you're here tonight and there is something that you're having a really hard time letting go of control and giving it to God. Let me tell you something. God cares so much for you that he gave his son to die on a cross because he doesn't want you to worry about those things. And tonight you say, I want to give this particular thing, this particular sin, this particular worry to God. Can you raise your hand so I can pray for you? See your hands. You can bring your head down. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for loving us so much that you provide everything that we need. We needed a Savior. You sent your Son to die on a cross for us. We need peace. You are that peace. God, I pray for all of those students that tonight they say, I want to turn away from worry, from sin, and I want to turn to you. Holy Spirit, fill their lives. Holy Spirit, nudge them and pull them towards you. I prayed as they seek you, Father, that you become real in their lives. Father, thank you. Because you are in control. And sometimes we have a hard time, Lord, letting you have that control. Tonight we just want to say, God, you are in control. You're in the driving seat. Just tell us what to do. Tell us where to turn. Because we want to honor you. In the name of Jesus, everybody say, amen. Amen.